Hey everyone, this is a quick video just to uh, uh, illustrate the idea of level curves and traces using Desmos 3D. Uh, so what I have showing here right now is a particular surface. Uh, f of x, y is x times y over square root of x squared plus y squared. So this looks sort of saddly, uh, but it has kind of a ridge that runs um, down the middle, it's not quite as smooth as um, what we think of as a normal like saddle surface, uh, but it still has sort of that um, change in direction um, where I'm going up in two different directions, going down two other directions uh, as I travel around. So it uh, looks sort of like that. <clears throat> what I have shown are what we call the uh, level curves, or sometimes you'll hear them referred to as contour curves. Uh, it's really just the same thing. Um, but those are going to be highlighted in these colors. So uh, way down here at the bottom at negative 5, we have this sort of cyan, light tealy blue color. Uh, and then it gradually gets to a darker blue, and then purples, and then lighter purples, and then... Um, through some pinks up into the red region by the time I get up here uh, at five. And so I kind of have all of these values that I'm going through uh, just put into this list. So this list L uh, starts at negative five and then goes every half unit uh, all the way up to five. So negative five, negative 4.5, negative four, all the way up to five. And what uh, this function is doing, right, is I have f of x, y, uh, which is my normal curve, right? That's just my normal surface right there. Uh, but with the restriction that Z is equal to L. So what this is doing is it's saying uh, Z is going to equal to negative 5. And then I'll put just that curve, right, where I have that surface, uh, but with the restriction that Z has to be negative 5. So there's only a couple places where that happens over here on this side, over here on this side. And you can kind of think of it as if I had a plane intersecting that surface, right, at a level of negative 5. This is where that plane would intersect. And then same thing for all the other values of, in that list L. So uh, same thing at negative 4.5, at negative 4, all the way up, uh, 0, you know, 1, 2, 3, all the way up to 5. Uh, so I'm just looking at where those planes are going to intersect um, that surface. And that is what we call the contour, um, or sometimes you'll hear it referred to as the level curve because uh, you're going at a certain level, right, certain Z height, whatever level that's at, uh, that's where you're going to put that curve. Um, there's also something called the trace we'll get into a little bit. I'll talk about with uh, these functions down here, but uh, that's kind of the idea uh, just with these uh, functions of two variables. You'll notice down here I got a function of three variables. Uh, we'll talk about that one a little bit more in a second. Uh, in case you're curious about how I get the different colors through there um, with that, uh, I'll also talk about that at the end of the video. But uh, just know these light blue, that's going to be kind of the first value in that list, the negative five, and then the last value uh, is going to be that red that's right there at the top. Uh, if you want to see this from a top-down view, you can just hit the grid over here, uh, and it'll rotate it to the usual, like x positive x on the right, positive y on the top, and you can get a good look at what those level curves would look at. So this is, right, this red is 5, and then it goes to 4.5, 4, 3.5, 3, all the way down. Uh, this kind of cross in the middle is the 0, right, where... I uh, get a level of zero, and then down into these uh, darker blue purple regions, those are going to be the negative values. So negative 0.5, negative 1, all the way down till we get to the negative 5. Uh, so you can always kind of view it from the top. This is a lot of times how we'll draw level curves, is just in our usual xy plane, uh, but with these curves representing different heights of my function, so different levels. The next thing is going to be looking at a uh, basically a surface, so a function of three variables. So I'm going to go ahead and hide these for now. Uh, and we have our g of x, y, z defined as x squared minus y squared plus e squared. 
Uh, now this function is kind of hard to represent, right? Uh, because it's a four dimensional object, right? I have X, Y, Z going in. I have some value coming out and you know, whatever representation I want to use, it requires four things. And so we live in a three dimensional world. So uh, space is kind of inadequate to describe this function. You might think of this as maybe uh, could be like a temperature function where uh, whatever X, Y, Z coordinate I want to put from the room, I can have a certain temperature at that spot. Uh, maybe there's a heater somewhere that's, you know, making it hot in some places, cold in other places. Um, but that's one way of thinking about it is just assigning this to some other value that makes sense to you in, in a space like temperature or um, humidity or something like that. The curves I have down here are essentially going to, um, we could do some level curves, right, for those. Uh, so this would tell me my Z function, or sorry, my G function uh, for this X, Y, and Z. Uh, so this would tell me this is the level curve, right, at one. Uh, so that's what I would get at one. Uh, if I wanted to change that value, right, this is what I would get at four. Uh, so I could even put in, if I want to put in, let's say, uh, maybe a number I haven't used. I don't think I've used little n yet. So that in the slider. Uh, so this is my function, or my level surface. This is what we would call level surface uh, at 1. And then as that goes up, right, we see how that surface changes. And if I want to kind of rotate this around, you might get a better view of what's going on. Um, so we have sort of this hyperboloid one sheet. Uh, it's going to go down right as I get to one. That hole's going to close in, form a cone. And then um, I should be getting, with the negative values, now a uh, hyperboloid of two sheets. So you can kind of think of your functions right, as these levels. Um, that are going on. So I got level 4.5 right there, level negative 2, negative 1, 0 is going to give me the cone and right there. Uh, then we're going to go to 1, 2, 3, that hyperboloid of one sheet as that level goes up. So that's one way of trying to visualize this function of three variables is just saying, okay, wherever I want to be, that's my level surface, and this is how my surface changes for different levels of that function, which right now we're calling G. Um, if I were thinking of this as more of an implicit curve, right, so maybe I I don't need another function G, and I just want to look at maybe the level curves on this, uh, implicit functions, thinking of Z as a function of X and Y again, uh, so like this F of X, Y, then we can go ahead and do that. Um, so I'll show this curve again with, I'll change that to a 1, I'll just change the end to 1. Um, so there's my hyperboloid, right, one sheet. And right now we are um, just looking at the level curve, right? So uh, this is my x on the right, uh, my y is somewhere here. Uh, so this is actually going to point in the... Let me get it oriented correctly. Uh, so there's x, there's y. So this is pointing in the y direction because uh, y is the negative one. Uh, x and z are the positive. It's the one that's different. So uh, we get this orientation around the y-axis, and these would be my level curves uh, in the y direction. And when they're in a different direction other than z, uh, they'll all they'll usually be called the trace. So we might call this the trace curves of this implicit function right here. Um, so contour curves don't necessarily have to be um, things that are level or a z equals type of thing. Uh, they could be a y equals l or you know an x equals l, that sort of thing. Uh, but a lot of times when they're the x or y, uh, they'll get a different name. They'll just be called the trace. Uh, if we wanted to see what the x looks like, or if we did x is L. Uh, now X is going to be all those values in that list. And we're looking at, you know, again, for any plane kind of intersecting where X is 5, uh, we get these red curves, which looks like uh, hyperbola. 
Um, and then again, for all these others, just a, a whole series of hyperbolas till we get to kind of this um, point right in here where uh, we get that X uh, that's right there. So, um, so those are again, just the level curves and um, it's a little bit hard to visualize uh, with any of these orientations because we have uh, kind of two sides like it's it's not just one sheet of a surface that um, that you can view from a from just one angle um, anytime I'm looking at it from a certain angle it's going to be covering up more of the surface so uh, a little bit hard to to look at the traces that way but um, there's positive ones on this side negative ones on this side that look uh, very similar uh, if you wanted to see uh, any other, right? So if I wanted to do this, uh, x squared minus z squared, x squared minus y squared plus z squared is 4. Then that's going to be, uh, again, something similar. Um, we'll go ahead and change that to a 4. We can see that. So just a little bit wider opening, uh, kind of right there in the middle. And uh, looking at z, right, these would be my level curve heights. Uh, so my level curve heights would be doing something like that again on top i have kind of the positive that i can see on the bottom i would have kind of the mirror image of that the negatives uh sort of in the same place so some of these you do have to kind of visualize in uh, 3d if it's not a strict function of x and y as we usually think of functions right i put in an x y i get a value out and there's no um, overlap every assigned x y value has a single you know f output um, for those guys. So the usual function sense, these you can kind of draw on the xy plane. These implicit curves not going to be as doable, uh, but you can still kind of think of drawing it if you were trying to draw it in 3D as just drawing the trace of a whole bunch of different levels and then uh, seeing what shape kind of emerges as you do that. So uh, if I cover up, you could kind of get a picture, right? If you had a whole bunch of traces, like what that figure might start to look like um, is a lot better when it's colored in, right? So um, thank goodness for these visualization tools that we have nowadays makes looking at things a whole lot easier, right? Uh, that's going to be kind of the end of the, the math part, just talking about the level curves and the traces that go the different directions uh, on those guys. So uh, again, if it's z equals some restriction, usually that's a level curve or a contour curve. Uh, if it's an x or a y equals those, uh, we would normally call uh, just a trace, right? So a trace on those guys. Uh, for those interested, so if you, if you don't care about how this got coded in, you can stop the video there. Uh, for those interested in uh, all the different coloring, gradations, and everything like that. Uh, we'll go through that in this last part. Uh, so down here, you can kind of see this, um, the CL is defined as HSV uh, in C11. So I'll kind of go through what those are. Uh, so NC is just creating a list again. Um, and this list will make a little more sense if I go through uh, the CL first. So HSV stands for hue saturation value. Uh, so it's a way of coloring. Uh, RGB is another one, red, green, blue, uh, different weightings of those. Uh, but the HSV hue is the first number, saturation, the second number, value, the third number. And the way you can think about that is the hue is like what you would get on a color wheel. So if you said something was red or um, this light blue, this cyan or purple, um, just wherever you are on the color wheel, that is the hue. Uh, the saturation is going to be how much pigment you get. Uh, so by taking this down, uh, you'll basically remove the color uh, from that hue. So if I take this down to say like a 0.5, uh, we're only using half the color in it. So everything looks a bit muted, more like pastel type colors. Uh, where they're just not quite as bright. Right? We're not using as much pigment. So uh, if I take it all the way down to zero, these would look white, right? There's zero color in there. Um, so that's going to be the saturation. Um, and that's point 0.1. So we want actual one there. Uh, the value, this is going to be kind of how dark you're going to make it. So uh, if I take this down to again, like a point 0.5, um, now you'll notice these colors are just all 
generally darker, right? This is no longer a bright blue at the end. It's kind of a still kind of a teal, but just a darker color of teal. Um, and again, the purples are just generally darker. That red is more maroonish at the end. Uh, so that is your value, just uh, how bright or how dark uh, that color is going to be. So generally, I'll leave saturation and value around one. Um, just give us the most amount of color we can get out of out of those. And then the, satur the hue is what I want to change. So that hue is uh, just pulling from this list, which we call NC. Uh, and I'm starting that list at 180. So hue goes from 0 to 360. Uh, kind of like you would go 360 degrees around a color wheel. Um, that's what it's going to do. Uh, zero is red. 360 is also red. So I didn't really want to go from red to red because um, I didn't want to differentiate between negatives and positives. Uh, so I'm starting at 180 and then going all the way to 360. And I'm just making sure that that number that's right there matches uh, the same number that's up here. So this one was... A 21 element list. Uh, this one is also a 21 element list. So I'm taking that 180 plus this 180 over 120. That's my step, right? So we'll be adding a little bit each time, right? About nine, right? Nine degrees if you think about moving around the color wheel. Uh, so about nine degrees is added to that hue, and that will change color as you move around the wheel. So we're starting at uh, this 180, which is this tealy color, and then getting all the way to 360, uh, which is the red. So um, just defining those lists is kind of how that goes. And then defining that color lets you, when you pick um, one of these, I'll go back uh, maybe to a surface. Um, so in your settings, right, if you want to define what that color is, uh, you can have the usual choices, but also that new color you defined. And so um, the surface is just going to pick the first value and just show up as bright teal, right, if I do that. So that's um, not super interesting. There's not a list of things that are there. Um, so I'll just keep that gray. But some of these others, right, uh, when I'm making a list of lines, right, if I'm defining this curve as a list of lines, um, basically a surface but with restrictions right so that's kind of my my list of restrictions that's in there uh, are just going to be those traces or uh, level curves depending on uh, what restriction i got um, and i can pick a color right and that color is going to be kind of this gradient from that teal all the way up to the red uh, so that's what's going on with those I uh, hope that was helpful. hope that helps you visualize a little bit uh, what we mean when we talk about uh, level curves, uh, traces, and level surfaces. So I uh, hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll see you on the next one.